Sleep and depression spin in a vicious circle. Low quality sleep can lead to depression. Depression often leads to low quality sleep. It's like the chicken or the egg. We can't really say which came first. We define depression as persistent episodes of disappointment, sadness, or hopelessness. Of course, there's a myriad of other symptoms you'll likely experience. All of these make it harder to perform daily activities. Leaving your bed feels unsafe. Going to work feels like a punishment. Feeding yourself feels like a chore. And of course, these are natural feelings to have at any given time in our life. We can feel symptoms of depression without actually being depressed. But if these feelings persist for more than two weeks, or if you feel them throughout most of the day, you may be dealing with a depressive disorder. If this sounds like you, then you might also notice how disrupted your sleep might be. You may have difficulty falling asleep at night. Once you do, it's often hard to stay asleep. As a result, in the morning, you feel tired and groggy, worsening your mood and restarting the cycle. Studies have found that most people with depression experience sleep problems and vice versa. In fact, many doctors will hesitate to diagnose depression if their patients don't report any trouble sleeping. So what are the most common sleep problems associated with depression? Insomnia, hypersomnia, and obstructive sleep apnea are the big three. In fact, 20% of people with depression have obstructive sleep apnea, about 15% have hypersomnia, or when you get too much sleep. Insomnia, though, is the most common. A resounding 80% of people with depression have insomnia. The lack of quality and consistent sleep can interfere with your serotonin production, which contributes even further to depression. Lacking sleep also affects your body's stress system and interrupts your circadian rhythm. And sleep deprivation increases cortisol production in your body. Most people call it the stress hormone. It's what kicks your body into fight or flight mode. All of this creates the perfect breeding ground for insomnia. Nearly half of all people with insomnia also have clinical depression. And like we said, 80% of people with depression experience bouts of insomnia. Insomnia doesn't only mean trouble falling asleep. It also involves waking up too early. Those with depression tend to bounce between insomnia and hypersomnia when trying to catch up on sleep. This leads to the big question, do people suffering from depression need more sleep? Well, yes and no. If you suffer from depression, you need the right amount of sleep. According to the CDC, adults need at least seven hours each night. Ideally, you shouldn't go over nine. If you do, you're teetering on oversleeping territory. In fact, about 15% of people with depression oversleep. Oversleeping is actually linked with something called atypical depression. Atypical depression is the idea that one's mood improves in response to a positive event. Think receiving a gift or getting a new job. But those positive mood shifts are only temporary because the real underlying issues causing your depression haven't been solved. So in one sense, sleeping can be a form of escape. But unless someone deals with the root causes of their depression, it can be haunting. There's a clear connection between depression and sleep disorders. Addressing one will most likely help the other. But remember, just because you feel tired doesn't mean you're depressed. Those who suffer from depression often have trouble sleeping. But how can you tell if your sleep troubles are the sign of something more serious, like a mental health concern? Before you get worked up thinking you might be depressed, ask yourself this vital question. Am I just tired? It all has to do with your desire to do things. Tired people want to engage in daily activities, but lack energy. People who are depressed aren't interested in those activities, even if they're well rested. Understanding the common symptoms will also help determine if you're depressed or tired. If you suffer from depression, you're likely to experience some of these symptoms. You may have irregular sleep patterns and feel tired during the day and wide awake at night. You likely lose interest in the things that once brought you joy, like art or music. You could also feel guilty, hopeless, and worthless for not participating in those activities. You may lack energy and feel fatigued most of the time. And you could also have trouble concentrating, which could be a sign of underlying ADHD. In fact, many doctors call depression and ADHD coexisting conditions. You might also either lose your appetite entirely or tend to overeat. And finally, in severe cases, you might experience thoughts of death and suicide. But again, the point here is frequency. If you're feeling tired, fatigued, and uninterested in things that typically make you happy, and this is because you haven't slept for a couple of days, it's likely you're not depressed, just sleep deprived. But if you find that these symptoms persist for several weeks or more, then it's worth talking with someone about it. And it can really, really help. People who undergo treatment for depression report improved sleep and overall better quality of life. Counseling is a great place to start. Talking through your symptoms and practicing cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, can improve your sleep. 
Antidepressants are also effective at combating depression once you find the right drug and dose. However, SSRIs have been shown to reduce REM sleep, which is essential for restorative and well-rested sleep. Lack of REM sleep can present depression-like symptoms, including lack of concentration, daytime sleepiness, and irritability. Depression doesn't have to control your sleep. Let's talk about some steps you can take to improve your sleep overall. First, talk to a therapist. They'll help you cope with depression and offer a variety of mental tricks you can use to process your feelings. Sometimes a behavior change is all you need. Next, make sure you're sticking to a consistent sleep schedule. Try going to bed and waking up at the same time every day. Forming a relaxing wind down routine tells your body when it's time to sleep. Void screens, bright lights, and stressful activities for at least an hour before bed. People who are depressed often feel inclined to nap. While naps are okay, keep them brief and early. These are called power naps. They're 10 to 20 minute naps you can take around lunchtime. Sleep longer than 20 minutes and you'll fall into deep or REM sleep. Waking from these cycles leaves you feeling groggy and tired. It's counterproductive to say the least. Shorter than 10 minutes and you won't get any restorative benefits. Experts suggest napping at least eight hours before bedtime. So if your bedtime is 10 p.m., don't nap after two. Some people drink before bed to take the edge off. Do yourself a favor, don't. Even a little alcohol can prevent you from getting a restful night's sleep. Instead, try getting outside and exercising during the day. Natural sunlight does wonders for your mood and circadian rhythm. Daily exercise will increase your sleep quality and reduce your depression symptoms. Just don't work out too late at night. Sleep and depression don't have to be this vicious circle. Grab the bull by the horns and wrestle that sucker into bed. Keep an eye out for symptoms of depression and call your doctor immediately if you're experiencing harmful thoughts. Establishing healthy nighttime and exercise habits are the first steps toward better sleep when dealing with bouts of depression. Trust me, when you sleep better, you feel better. Thanks for watching, everyone. Sleep well. Thank you and good afternoon. This is Sam Vaughn for Sam's Sports Report and Sam's Mental Health Day. Let's start with mental health. Something we talk about is major depressive disorder and so many things that are not a good idea to do. One of these things is taking non-naps, staying to a consistent schedule. Taking long naps are not good for you. Why? Because it leaves you in a more depressed mode and more into doing things you don't want to do. There's many other exercises that you can do that will help you. Exceeding naps of over 25 minutes or 30 minutes may exasperate your problems. Getting short naps and also exercising and also doing the other things for your mind can be helpful. This is why something like yoga or uh, meditation may be good for you. Um, important is also to get sunlight. Um, something you need to do, something you can do is use the Calm app the Peloton app, the any app that helps you along the way. There's an app called Bloom. It's a CBT app. The most provided full is help for me is Peloton. I'm getting good sunlight and running outdoors and exercising. It provides me with helpful tips and how to go on a run. I didn't learn that for myself when I got in my older ages. I learned how to do that from Peloton. Plus going on a run outside provides me with sunlight, which we just talked about. I was at hookah last night and holding myself accountable and being on like a stimulant like nicotine is not something that I want to be do. So I have decided to commit to being more accountable for not smoking hookah or any other kind of nicotine. I don't have major depressive disorder, but make me making me anxious and in, in this I can lead up to depression. I tried it last night and it led to all kinds of issues, hookah, but something I wouldn't have known my why to quit if I didn't try it one more time. Nicotine is a drug that speeds up your m messages between body and mind and main focus tobacco when it consumes something that could refer to this as Ritalin for me, I would really affect my schizoaffective disorder, which I don't need any more energy than I already have. That's part of the reason that I stay up so late and so long. There are many types of drugs that could help with 
seasonal affective disorder, major depressive disorder. One of these things that help you so much is protein. To make a simple protein shake or find a bar and vegetables, most people think that sounds harder than it actually is, but taking a protein shake daily would lead to better things. Some people think may think the keto diet, which I'd like to learn more about. But I'm concentrating on many things. One of those include taking sleepy time tea before I go to bed. Many nights I've stayed up till 12 or 1 and that works great when you're working at 12. But it doesn't work well. So for me, I, got, I need to get to bed by at least 11. Now shooting for 1030. Even though maybe get out of bed by 10, I don't feel as good. Because the reason being one of them is because my medications need to be spread out by a long period of time, such as 10 to 12 hours, probably closer to 12. Something they talk about for TM, for people with major depressive disorder is TMS. They have told me that it has not helped, although if I am having depressive actions, I wonder if it does. Where some, Where can I do some things better for myself? What would things be taking care of myself? Run at least two days a week or three to four. Keep it around three to four. Get out of bed and take my meds before 1030. Something that helps me see sleepy time tea. A protein shake is the best way to get protein or other ways are vegetables and any other ways. Finding a job is something more that comes more into play, but something I thought about is getting up, starting before 11, and then also getting off before 6 or 7. That plays into more of my goals. Now we move on to baseball. The Royals play the Guardians last night. Tonight, they have lost now, lost 6 in a row. And they won't make the playoffs. They just keep losing every game. My goal was the Worlds to get 8-12. and 12. Well, they're going to have a tough time of doing that the next the 20 games. But hopefully the Worlds don't just fall straight on their ass. Otherwise, they'll be okay. Worlds need to grab one today in order to try to take the series tomorrow. Tonight, Brady Singer will be on the mound for the Worlds, and Tanner Beeple will be on the mound for the Guardians. Singer needs to get better against... A team's over 500. Florida State was number 10. They lose again for the second week in a row. 0-2. And their lives are almost out of playoff reach for sure, even if they don't win every game. Florida State is 0-2 and is all the way out of the rankings and was 10th to begin the year. And Florida State quarterback DJ Ungalai has been hearing he is going to be great maybe for too long and has just fallen out of it and not been very good. College beats them and looks like they're going to be a tough match for Missouri in two weeks. In Columbia for the 11:45 games in a week from Saturday. The Chiefs will start their season against the Ravens in a on Thursday. We'll have a special for you on Thursday. For tomorrow, we release the NFC West, and then we'll do a preview of the Packers' schedule for Friday night and open that up to maybe a West NFC West tomorrow, and then do a preview of the Packers' schedule going into Friday, and then I'll pick the teams for the NFC North going into this weekend. That's Sam on Swartz and Sam's Mental Health Day. Thank you and have a good afternoon.